Uh, welcome to the Looney Bin Podcast. This is episode eight, and the reason why we were late today was because we were coming from Micros- Microsoft Center. Yep. We had about twelve to thirteen hundred dollars in the back of the car worth of monitors, you know, CPU, RAM, everything. Everything you could possibly dream of your future PC, that's what we had in the back, right? Except for the graphics card. Yeah, except for the graphics card because, hey, maybe we're not that rich yet. But we got rear-ended by a freaking bulldozer. I don't oh, even know man. how the hell that happened. Tyler was just driving like this, and Tyler said some, you know. I was going 60, and this bulldozer had to have been going at least 80. So, wow. and, and the and the weirdest thing was that it was just as like the flames are coming out top. I felt like I was in Mad Max, you know, Fury, and some guy with this horns, Roadhog. Everyone know Roadhog from? He was driving this freaking rig. I don't even know how his belly is sticking out of that because how does he fit in the cab? But he just is throwing hooks. I don't know. I mean, I was late for a different reason. I actually was uh, trying to get my vote in at the local polling office and. Uh, they had a lot of malfunctions going on. I was late. Funny how that works, right? <laughs> yeah. Soft, yeah. Soft voter suppression. It's going and, on, folks. And and I'm just wondering why why we we have the feeling of voting and we want to go out there and vote and uh, they're not letting us vote. I'm just really confused about this. Well, you're yeah. a North Dakota resident, so that might be part of it. Yeah, and that's a gist. I sent in my absentee True. ballot two weeks ago. Hopefully that got there, right? Uh, but anyways... That's the reason why we're late, and uh, I'm John, as uh, you should all know me, right? I'm John, and we got... I'm Eric. And I'm Tyler. And we're going to do a, a good podcast today on November 8th, I believe it is, right? November voting day. 8th. Yeah, November voting 8th. day today. First Tuesday of the full week. So, to me, for me today, it was really weird, because as student teaching, you know, they had a day off. It was online learning day, which they implement at schools now. Hmm. So, and I was really confused about it. I was like, why Why are we doing online learning voluntarily right now, right? <clears throat> well, it happens to be that much of these schools and elementary schools are the election poll centers to where people go, which is kind of funny because St. Paul Central is the high school that I teach at. There's no reason they would not do a voting poll in there. Yeah. But they have to close down the whole district because the elementary schools are not going to school. Oh, so it was only the elementary schools. Uh, from my understanding, it was. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe it was just only element- a lot of the elementary schools were the polls, you know, do it in the gym and whatnot. It was really weird because I was like, so does that mean, like, what if what if the high school gets a day off, you know, like, oh, we're going to take the day off because the football team is going to state. Did anyone else do that? Well, we never made it that uh, far, so I never got school, that opportunity. Yeah, our high school team won a total of three games <laughs> while I was in high school, so it <laughs> did not happen for us. And, yeah, that's it, almost one a year. So, And that's also almost. the same the same high school that Nate, our producer, actually went to. And uh, in, intriguingly enough, Benson, did they only win in uh, Benson, rural Benson area? This just must have been tennis. Tennis and volleyball. We did pretty good in tennis. I don't know why, but... Yeah. Well, County oh, Hoyam, Hoyam. That's the reason why. Well, County was always like a big, uh, big wrestling school. Oh. I don't know why. That's well, because you were on like, the wrestling team, weren't you? No. <laughs> there was one guy actually in middle school who came up to like try and recruit us to uh to wrestling, and so we've actually that's kind of become like a joke because he kind of didn't sound like he fully was. I don't know. There, this man. I don't know if he should have been in the high school. Or middle school, but you know he comes up to us this big burly buff little, little dude. Not big this way, but big sideways. Oh yeah. And he comes up to us, and he comes up to my friend Nathan. He's like, "Hey, you're a big boy. You play any? Uh, you play some football? Huh? You want to come out and try out for wrestling? Huh?" He's just like berating us at our lunch table. We're like, dude, we don't know boy. who you are, and you're just calling us big boys. It's kind of weird, buddy. Damn. I'm just trying to eat my did he my of, Domino's pizza right now. Did he kind of come like this, a soft hand no. right on the shoulder? I've had that it was more like a f- before. <laughs> Firm handshake was more what it was. Firm handshake? Okay. Yeah, our, I, we had Scotty OG back in Benson High School, the football coach. Uh, going into ninth grade, I stopped going out. He walks up to me in the hallway, puts his arm around me. He's like, William, you know, we could 
We could really use you this year. Just hand. It migrates from the upper back to the lower back. I'm telling you, inches from my asshole at some points. And this was the, like this happened probably every couple weeks. And every that, couple that, weeks. That's all I know. Weeks. This wasn't that's a one time. Scotty OG no. is just for that because of who he was and, and this just a slight little fondle of the hair right above your you know your belt you know yep. you got down there he kind of likes to tickle it 100 <laughs> percent. yeah our our guy was mr lee he was a volleyball coach oh no but no his weird thing <laughs> was that like in class because he was like a history he was like teacher. a computer teacher <laughs> Ooh. but he would say things like he talk about how you could vibrate through walls. <laughs> like this man was one of the weirdest people I ever knew, and everybody in the volleyball team was just like, "This guy's telling us like the weirdest strategies." Like he <laughs> he tried to play like the mental game. Yeah, weird. Like not even like an intimidation thing. Like he tried to like deceive the other team so through his... different weird plays. Even if it was like detrimental to his own team, he'd be like, "No, jump up over here as if the ball's over here." But actually, it's over here, so you have to, you know, try, oh, try and hide what you're doing. Yeah, it was yeah. just it was just psychological warfare. It's like I have never heard open. this for <laughs> volleyball, <laughs> high school volleyball. <laughs> um, clip yeah. it. Uh, there is a. <laughs> it's funny because I know last episode last week we, the boys, uh, you know, Eric, Patrick, and Preston. They they went down the lineage of the the names right. They did a lot of vocabulary terms. They had the quiz at the end of the day. They're just dro- name dropping, right? Mm-hmm. Whose names? Uh, they were just you know guys from the high school. Oh, okay, and, okay. and and I find it so funny because this is like I just might as well start name dropping Benson shit. But I don't even want it. I I mean I want to do it, but I don't want to do it because obviously it's, this is different. But it'll go too deep. Yeah, I know. We we yeah. could we could start with Prince Michael Dean and end with Squeef. Like that's his, that's his Squeef. Body. It's very true. Yeah. yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. yeah. Um. So, mo- moving forward, there's actually a article that caught my eye that I wanted to, first off. Hey, phone's away. Well, Grab yeah, I right just now. wanted to read it, what it was. This is family so, time. Mm-hmm. So has anyone heard in the chat, maybe if you heard it or not, but do you guys know what, what the Powerball is worth right now? Well, actually, someone in California won it today for $1.9 billion. I was going to talk about that. You know how much they paid for that ticket? $2. $2.04. There's a There's tax a... on lottery in California? I was say, that sounds like a California movie. It was, that is it was bullshit. Two, it was two dollars and four cents that they got that, and yeah. I had I I know people that were buying Powerball tickets. Yeah, just because of the what was it, two point? It was at two billion at one point, was it not? No, oh, yeah. The record breaking was uh, well, the drawing was estimated one point nine. I don't know what it finished at. It could it have finished, finished above. Probably finished above two billion. Um, however, did you guys buy any Powerball yesterday? No, I bought uh, we bought ten. You did. Yep. You got four dollars back. Eight dollars back. Really? Sorry. Yep. Eight dollars. Oh. I bought three and I hit zero out of eighteen numbers. Oh, there you so, go. Yeah, good day. You Actually, know? probably the worst possible luck you could have. Yeah, I know. I thought I should win a prize just for that. <laughs> but the way I bought the tickets was even better. Uh, my old roommate, he moved out in September. Ebnet, now the AD of Benson High School, at twenty-two years old. That's a story for another time. I hey, found uh, two scratch-offs in our room just laying on the ground that were his because he's kind of a gambling addict as well as other substances. <laughs> and, you know, I took those scratchers in. They were $7 in winners just laying on the floor. So Jesus. just bought some free Powerballs with that. So here's a little odds for you here. So the Powerball winner was the one woman who matched all six numbers, right? So that's how you can win – Outside of it, right? But you, you, they match all six numbers in California. The odds of winning this, just, uh, take a guess. One in two hundred ninety-two point five million. Yeah, that is yep. that is exactly right. <laughs> it's actually one in two ninety-two point two million, according oh, to the it. association. Unbelievable. But close guess. Had no well, idea. So, this is something I did not know about the Powerball. But there's also players should still check their tickets on a chance that they want other like uh prizes yeah so like the multi-state lottery association gave more than 11.2 million 
or sorry, 11.2 million tickets won cash prizes totaling to 98.1 million, including 22 tickets that won $1 million in prizes for matching five white numbers, mm -hmm. but not the Powerball. The jackpot was recorded 1.9 billion, but grew to 2.04 billion by the time of the drawing, and the association said in a statement, making it the world's largest lottery prize, which is literally crazy. The jackpot was so large that California lottery officials didn't have the appropriate signage. At the gas station where the ticket was sold, <laughs> they ta they taped a B onto the signs that read "Millionaire Made Here," so they would instead read "Billionaire Made Here." Wow. Was no this, one expected that. I was yeah. gonna say all that of the surreal. all the gas stations here in Minnesota. You know they have their they've just got like the little digital signs mm -hmm. up, and all of them are just at nine hundred ninety nine million for the past like two weeks, because it's just been above a billion this whole time because it's not expected to go above. Yeah, you know, get up there. <clears throat> Guess who won it though? So the guy, the guy who won it is. All right. All right. Um, sorry, I was looking at. So the winner has yet to come forward to Caroline's. Somebody's holding it. The ticket did, however, make one millionaire. Joseph, I can't pronounce his last name. I apologize. Prakayadin? He was the own. The owner of gas station was awarded his own one million for being the retailer who sold the winning ticket. So the hmm. people who sell the winning ticket get <laughs> they get money as well. And he, he came from Syria in 1980 with his wife and two children and then, you know, yada, yada, yada. His long, you know, great story. Oh, yeah. What That's a guy incredible. to win it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is there something with that you can take it all at once or you can get increments, but there's yeah, some it's... sort of tax, though, right? Well, yeah, you can either take a, a, a lump sum right away. In this case, the $2 billion, you probably got, like, $1 billion, and then you got taxed on that, so you probably... Lump sum was probably, probably like six hundred million or something, maybe yeah, a little which higher. Which is still just a stupid amount of money. <laughs> or you could take so like roughly sixty-five million a year for thirty years, which I think is better. Uh, which yeah. I also agree. I mean, it's already a stupid amount of money. Yeah, yeah. It's like imagine one million dollars a year. But the sad thing is, a millionaire is not even that much anymore. I mean, I it mean, still is, but it's like it's almost like the ratio of looking at people now making a hundred k a year. That used to be a Oh God, you know, yeah, it used to be a big number. Now it's not. No, it's it's not a big number anymore. But what is still impressive is having a million dollars in net worth, just because a lot of people spend all their money. Like there's plenty of people making over a hundred grand, living paycheck to paycheck, especially yeah. where that salary is more common, like California. Yeah, no, true. Like it's just so expensive to live these days that yeah, there's still issues Inflation, going on. Inflation, baby. Oh, yeah. yeah. Inflation and housing shortage. Yeah, housing's the huge thing. It's like, and and the crazy thing is, there isn't really a reason for it to be so crazy. Like, there should be, and this is kind of an interesting thing that I've I've been seeing more of, and it's people talking about not necessarily having like bigger cities or things like that, but kind of like the detriment of roads in general, things like that. Mm -hmm. Like how much wasted space there is. Which then makes things cost more. It's true. The one thing that I always find interesting, and I would love to learn more about, going off the thing about you know detrimented roads, is kind of the transportation department of states or the national uh, national side of things, mm -hmm. where they they manage the roads, and the people that are going out there and, and looking at. Um, surveyors yeah yeah surveyors like you know looking at like do you think it just needs a tar over or whatever and they, they send these crews out and they do it all one thing i maybe i've talked about this before i i don't i don't really think so but so like my boss he's uh like in my regular job he's a sheriff and so then he when i talk a lot and he was letting me know that so the ever you see a state patrol um truck like it's a highway patrol, highway state patrol, and it's a truck. Are you talking mm -hmm. like a pickup or like? Yeah, a, like oh, a okay, pickup. okay, yeah. So those ones have scales on the side for semis to go on to. Okay. So. Hmm. What do you mean by that? Uh, see, I'm getting to that. So a lot of times, so farmers, but you know, not always farmers, but other companies, they want to load their truck as much as they can to send it to the other place, you know, right? Yeah. Yep. You're shipping your supplies, you're shipping your product to a lot of other places. Well, 
the U.S. What is it called? Transportation. It's something DOT US practically. Yeah, Department, Department of Transportation, of Transportation practically. Yeah. They have a limit, a national limit, or they have came out and surveyed these roads to understand how much weight that they can, that they can hold without damage increasing over time. Mm -hmm. So there's these uh, the state state patrol officials will are able to they're trained for that purpose of like looking at semis. They can look at a semi, look as like oh where their tires at, yeah, they're bulging or not, and they're like oh this one's over low. I'm gonna pull them over. I'm gonna have them pull up on the scales and weigh them. If they're oh. over the limit, you got to leave it there. Really? Or you pay the massive amount of fine right off the bat. So a lot of farmers obviously take the back roads. And some farmers are different. Granted, North yeah. Dakota, you know, they take they take back roads so that obviously there's not much state patrol on those roads. Mm -hmm. But some of them, if they get that, you could sit there until someone comes up and unloads some of the stuff out of it. Out of, say, you're, you're hauling grain and load some of the grain into another thing and then you go forward i've never heard of that before yeah it's crazy like, I, I've heard I knew of weighing what stations. weight limits were in like yeah. yeah weighing stations and stuff but i never heard of somebody getting pulled over and weighed oh yeah that it, it's definitely a, they often don't do that but like they will if it looks you know if they have the feelings of doing that obviously there's those weight stations where they have to pull in you know every time i ask to come in That's get crazy. weighed and if they don't get past, there's, I think, I imagine there's cameras, but I think some of these roads, you know, where there's no scale, they'll pull them out and say, hey, you got to, you got to get on top. I think the fine is like 3000 in North Dakota. It might be more or less. Maybe. That's but I think wild. it's 3000 That's not bad, though. I was safe. You're probably pulling more than, well, your way company... more than $3,000. Yeah, but these farmers, is. though, you know, single, you know, yeah. non-corporation farmers or something like that. Like for a big That's company, true. yeah, then it's just, it's like, we're going to stiff it. But the problem is if mm -hmm. they get caught, that shipment stays there. Yeah, that's true. So, like, yeah, maybe it's not $3,000. Like, they, they can fist it, but... Mm -hmm. $3,000 and the wait time of yeah. getting your product to the market or getting it to your client or consumer. It's really you know, weird. how much more are you paying and... I bet there's a job for that, isn't there? For like what? Someone, say Walmart's, you know, sending stuff from their main warehouse over to the other Walmart stores. There must be guys being like, what do you hey, mean? this like, pallet weighs this much, this pallet weighs this much. We're going to total it up. This is as much pallets that can go in Oh, there. yeah. That's called supply chain. Yeah. That's oh, the, really? Yeah, it's one of the hottest job markets right now. I was going to say, I, that's, what my, uh, that's what my one job was for. That one application. Oh, really? Denied me, by the way. Wait, Thank you. Well, not necessarily managing weight load, but um, they're all about, like, the entire company is built around supply chain. It's It was a supply chain technology company, mm, which was then cool. bought by another another company, and I was just doing their uh, their grunt work, we'll say it that way. That, that was what the job was for. Yeah. But, you know, they, they cover everything of, you know, what can go where and how can we improve on supply chain stuff and things like that, so... I mean, it was like seven hundred million dollar company, and it's. They said they've just been rapidly growing. What? What are we looking at? <laughs> John was just checking out my ice real quick. Yeah. Oh. You know, the old Casio. Yeah. There it is. But yeah, no. I mean, they said that they started. I don't even remember. Not too long ago, and it's just growing more and more. And he he was telling me about it. He's like, this is. An insanely fast-growing company in business. Yeah. Because I mean, a lot of it is now with the you know everybody's buying things somewhere, and I mean a lot of stuff. I mean, this isn't necessarily that connected to supply chain, but a little bit. I mean, people buying meals at home. Yeah. You, know, yeah, you got HelloFresh. You got all these different meal boxes that people are buying now. Now that's something that's coming in. You have a completely new market of food and product that needs to get sent to people. Yeah, and the industry as a whole just got like completely reworked from COVID nineteen. Oh right? yeah. Right, because the supply chain's been moving and moving and moving, and there's no time to like shut it off and you know reevaluate. COVID was a time where everything got shut off. Nothing was shipping at some points, and so they had time to like reassess their business, and now. They realize there's so many inefficiencies here and there and how they're shipping their materials, like they're, which distributors they're getting stuff from. Should we be getting stuff overseas still? Like, yeah, how right. should we be doing this? And so that's become a really big, like, talking point in business is just how to 
create a more efficient supply chain. And the and the weirdest, the weirdest thing was I think that it was it was a much needed break, I think. Obviously, COVID was yeah, a we horrible love global pandemic. Right, <laughs> it, it's a, obviously the worst thing what are you that, saying, John? that could have happened. <laughs> but I think the break allowed like something good came out of the bad. Oh yeah, and and I there's always good in the bad. Like there was someone that that created something similar to HelloFresh. It was a friend of a friend or you know a distant relative. I don't remember who who it was. Um, but they created a company similar to HelloFresh and they grew massively and they started just sending out these, you know, meal stuff and, and, and I think the, the objective of it, like HelloFresh and stuff like that is, is intriguing. I'm, uh, if you want to pay for it, then great. I think it's, uh, hopefully you're making then enough money to do that then, then that means you're not lazy. Yeah. But I think HelloFresh is really like, uh, my girlfriend, Megan, she, her family gets it once in a while. Like they have like three meals once a week. Mm-hmm. It's it's a really it it tastes fresh, not even memeing on the word. It, it it's good recipes. It kind of shows you into different areas. Like I would enjoy doing it once a week just to try a different type of uh, dish. I was gonna say my brother he actually just uh, got a shipment for it yesterday. I, I my family tried it a couple times and it's like it's pretty decent. Like they send you some the pretty base, quality right? food and then. You still get to cook it, but what's really nice about it, and I see, you know, grocery stores and Target and stuff with their, you know, you just pull in and we'll bring your stuff out to you. I think that's what they're trying to combat Mm -hmm. is this, like, convenience idea of you don't have to go to that grocery store anymore. Mm -mm. You don't have to, and this is even something that, you know, what are we going to start doing with the malls that we all have? Like, Mall of America, sure. That that's probably gonna be eternal. That's like a tourist spot. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, I, I was seeing TikToks and stuff of just empty malls, because we and we even stopped mall, at yeah. one after uh, coming back from what was that Chicago, our sophomore year, you something like that. It was just that tiny mall that had like Nothing three food options. Oh mm. yeah. And you walk through this place, it's just deserted. There's nothing in there, because nobody's going into stores anymore. I, I do find, personally, I like ordering things online, maybe, you know, stuff I can't get, but I low-key want to, I want to go in the store and see it. I want to I want to make sure it's something that I want. I feel like it's time for me to process, but also I feel like we're in generation still, not in the base generation where they're like, malls, let's go hang out at a mall, you know, for fun. But yeah. I think we're also, we're on the, towards the end of that type of cycle, and I still, like even today we were we were about to go to the Rosedale Mall, and we didn't end up going. Time didn't. Yeah, um, it got rear-ended. On yeah, the way back from Micro Center. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so we had to deal with that guy in the bulldozer, Roadhog. Um, but the weirdest thing though is this is like I still would go to a mall. I like oftentimes I'd go to a mall. And I wouldn't buy anything. Every time I go to a Mall of America, I maybe buy one thing and it's a Lego set. Yeah, which is Fair. something I'm not even going in for. It's I'm going like, yeah, you know what I mean though. Like you just uh, happen into the Lego store, and yeah. you yeah. know you can't leave without something. I know. <laughs> and that new Star Wars set's looking a little too appealing. Yeah, they know they, they're worth money. Yeah, yeah. They no, I, I like the mall, the Mall of America. I mean, there are some malls that should die, and there are some malls that yeah. should live. I think uh, I'm a fan of the outlet malls though. Yeah, those are pretty good because they have a lot of good. Uh, you walk discounts. outside. I'm a sucker yeah. for that. Yeah, I think that's really cool is that, like, we have places like Albertville or some other places. Yeah. Is there some places in North Loop, maybe? I don't even know. North Loop? That's, like, in the city. Oh, yeah, I don't remember. But there's definitely some... Albertville pl- is the main one. Yeah, yeah. Albertville is the main one where you can just go in and you walk to different stores. You have so many options where I feel like you can park your car and then go to these stores in this location. And then you go out and then boom, it's done. And I, I think those are nice instead of this inner, just the malls in general, when they are built, uh, my dad remembers the West Acres Mall in Fargo, North Dakota being built. It was just a field. And once it was built, it's massive. Like it is a crazy construction project, you know, that is, is happening that employs a lot of workers, which is arguably a good thing. But what happens to these malls when they're done? Like that is so much money in demolition potentially. Yeah. Or a waste of space. Like what would you make okay, here's the question. If you got a mall 
it doesn't matter the location, but if you got a mall and you're like, okay, it's, it's super low, everything's empty, and you had to buy it, what would you do with it? Either hotel or housing. Because that's something that I feel it, it would take a lot of work. It would take a whole lot of work. But the thing is, you can get so many rooms out of these stores. I mean, you and you know, you get such a variety and it's kind of already laid out in the same way yeah. as a hotel or kind an of apartment. Like a plaza. Building. Yeah, kinda of like you have a plaza, you know. Yeah. You know? I mean it would take a whole lot of renovation. But yeah. it is the same way that it's already set up. You know, so you've already got this space that's kind of designed similarly to a hotel or a, or a uh, an apartment building and then there's suddenly you know all this more housing or you know places for people to stay and things like that mm-hmm. i think i'd make it like a bar hopping destination probably make it have more, like more adult bars themed. yeah like have four or five different bars and then maybe throw some arcades or bowling alleys or even like a theater in there just like the stuff world's that largest people Dave like to Busters. do yeah something like that grand slam yeah have like a little Ooh. uber service running all the time never have to worry about those drunk drivers if you know what i'm saying yeah. <laughs> i there's two things I was, I was thinking about doing so when i was younger i'm gonna admit this i'm sorry you know i was an airsofter well, i yeah. thought you were gonna say you were a drunk driver and no no yeah. no <laughs> Back at the age of 12. Yeah, John back at the age of 12. Which one's worse? I, I, I sipped the bottle and I, I said, let's drive. Yeah. Um, no, but so in Airsoft, and I don't want to get into this because this is horrible, but I know Nate kind of gets off on this, so maybe maybe he'd like this. He's not even listening. Um, yeah, he hates us. Yeah, he does. Nate, do you have a mic? Yeah, what's up? You, yeah, okay, well, you know, we're not even listening to it. You're going to want to hear this. I heard Airsoft. Yeah, yeah. So, Airsoft. So, there's Milsom events. Milsom as in, like, uh, play action or, you know, role playing. Like LARP? Yeah. As in, as in military simulation. Yeah, yeah. military oh, simulation okay. that, that happens. That, so, these malls that are opened up, that are, they're gone, right? There, there's no, no stores in there. They will have Milsom events in there where team v team v team, potentially, like, three or two on, you know two teams go against each other and it, it's a unique experience i used to watch a lot of youtubes on it. it was really cool i thought really cool that's a bad you know obviously there's something to say about military you, you know like uh it's cool though i mean i think it's, it'd be fun it's a hobby yeah. it's like yeah i mean what's the difference between that and playing like laser paintball? tag or paintball well laser tag paintball call Nerf. of duty yeah it's like I, I can kind of stand behind it as, you know, you're actually, like, physically doing it. Like, yeah. it's actually a little bit more of a physical, you know, going out, meeting people kind of activity. Yeah, right. and you can get the urges out, too. Like, once GTA 6 drops, you already know murders are going down. <laughs> oh, my God. So, I'm just saying. You no, know, I, I hear you. We need GTA you. 6. Rockstar, are you there? I'll yeah. see you in 10 years. Yeah. GTA 6. GTA 6, they might give you a beta in 2028. Yeah. But... I, my other thing was is that I would love to do it as like a, if I have a mall and then each of these different stores are actually different exhibits for different mediums of art. I think that would be really cool. That would be cool. So a like, museum. Yeah, in a way. It, <laughs> well, in a way it would be a museum, but yeah. also it would be like, okay, this one store. So say you had a JCPenney's. This uh-huh. whole store, this is like a, a photo gallery of different people from the community and you can purchase art there too yes and then the That's next nice. one would be um digital cinematic so like the movie theater that everyone left out of this is showing the short films mm-hmm. and then one would be sculptures or one would be could potentially be jewelry and then one another big area would be music or i'd imagine like live music in the middle of the plaza or something like that it'd be cool to like showcase yeah. something i think that'd be cool i think that'd be cool as well I think it could work pretty well, actually, like, because, I mean, then you could just start, you know, that that would also work pretty well profit-wise. Welcome back. Uh, sorry about that. We're we back. had a new laptop. We even, you know, like we said, went to Micro Center and, well, like, technology these days just fails on you yeah. any minute. Yep. Must have like, got crushed in the crash or something a little bit. You know? <laughs> yeah, that was, that was the processor, processor right there. Processor kind of snapped in half. 
<laughs> Nate had to rebend it. <laughs> yeah. The the, the worst yeah, the worst part is. It. For the, fan, for the true fans out there, it's not even this laptop. This laptop could probably run your whole house off the one battery source. What? It, it, it's the Wi-Fi, sadly. I believe it. And, and uh, I don't know if I believe that. I, I plugged a... This is a great story, actually. I plugged our, a, a space heater in that Nate gave me about <laughs> two, two, three days ago. Yeah. I was like, oh, I can I can be warm down in my room. God forbid. Plug the uh, space heater in. I'm just chilling. I'm watching some YouTube, falling asleep. Then all of a sudden, every electronic device in my room goes off. <laughs> I hear it. I hear like kind of a pop noise. Space heater goes Breaking. out, and I go, yeah. wow. So this one little thing just blew out the entire house's breaker. So. I'm still cold down there, so we'll have to figure that one out. But, well, warm bodies, we can pack that room. Yeah, you're sleeping in my it's bed tonight, John. Oh, okay. I have, uh, um, I have a heater on, on in my room, and it's the same model. There you go. Same model. Have it plugged in, running, you know, many hours out of the day, and she's fine. Well, it's probably because the second one got plugged in that. <laughs> That the breaker flipped. You know? <laughs> you know? <laughs> you're, you're, you're well, is it because we doubled up? Is yeah. that the issue? I've done that in the bonus room. Not a good idea. <laughs> God, only I one of us gets the, the bonus heat every night. We, we do know that... Yeah, there's um, natural heat sources up there. Gee, we do know Minecraft. That Tyler and my room are on different, are on different uh, circuits. Because mm-hmm. we blew the breaker doing something earlier. No, we. Oh, the, no, yeah. it was the lime. Which is a part. tree, yeah. That's another great story. Jesus, what? Yeah, yeah what? What was this? I saw that yeah, on I Citizen. Saw yeah, so, so Saturday, <clears throat> sorry Sunday, so uh, Sunday, Megan, uh, my girlfriend again. Sorry, I'm not flaunting that. It's just as a fact. If you don't know, Megan. Megan. She was out. And she just Megan is about hand. to leave. We, you know, we did stuff on Saturday, all of us, and and um. I'm about to leave and there's just popping like there's like it sounds like gunshots and it was this is like what a big bright flashes you could just see the shadows of it like just the what's it called reflection of it right like middle of the day yeah you could see the bright light lights coming through the window like casting a, a like brighter light than the sun onto the wall yeah it was that's, crazy that's pretty awesome and so we go outside we're looking at it what's it so it's a it's a line going, so here's our house right here, and then just to the east of it, there's a line going north and south. Your power line? And it, well, I, I mean, it's it's a different power line. It's not directly correlated with us, but it probably is. Okay. I didn't fully see. But it was hitting a branch, so it was just, just going nuts. And the wind was really windy on Sunday. And so we were trying to call, Nate and I were trying to call, more Nate than I, I was just researching more. Nate was actually doing the calling and he was figuring out like non-emergency number to call, um, you know, calling the company, uh, like our, our uh, electricity Yelden company. Tell me to call XL Energy? So here, Tyler, here's getting to the story. So we get to the point where non-emergency lines apparently are not open on the weekend because fuck it, right? Yeah. Because why not live a little... Uh, a little amb- ambitious on the weekend and not report it. Hey, you got to go crazy on the weekend. <laughs> yeah, right? A little purge. And uh, so then that didn't work. So we're thinking, like, do we call a f- – we can't call non- non-emergency fire department or non-emergency police line. So if we just – you know, if it gets bad, call 911. Also, then I – you know, I was looking on XL Energy on their website, and I saw there's outages right around this area, super close. Like just a block away or there's something else like that and we're still good we're running power and i was like well they're getting to it the, res- the, the little caption underneath said we'll respond shortly you know please bear with us type of deal right sounds good you know i'm sitting out there with a lightning rod or like a metal <laughs> rod and just hoping for something maybe a lawsuit and uh and so then they I don't know. They just never. They never came until we we're like, well, if it gets really bad, you know, we're all up here. We see what's going on. We'll call nine one one when it gets really bad. Like if the wind increases and it just is consistent, pop, 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 pop. And eventually, the neighbors across the street, which is an older couple, which is beyond me, which is maybe even another source of a conversation, why there's an older couple across the street in a college area, 
just just rabid college students all around. There's a few older couples. I know. It just is really interesting. They were here before the college. You know, yeah. Yeah, that's true. They probably yeah. actually settled with the They're city of St. Paul. They're older than the U of M. <laughs> yeah. But so anyways, they called the fire department, I think. They were all standing outside. We saw, and then the fire truck came down. They pulled out. The siren was going off. They left. Like 10 minutes later. And then a lineman truck came out. And I was playing a game or doing something else, but probably, you know, whatever I was doing. About 15 minutes later, they were gone too. And they kind of stopped. So I don't know if they cut down the, cut down a part of the branches or something, or they, they taunt the wire a little bit more. Not really sure. This is a golf question. Um, Colby Goff. Um, he's probably with Mittness right now. So yeah, huge lineman. Yeah, huge, huge. Mittness. Saving America one day at a time. Yeah, Mittness. Alley Mittness. Oh, yeah. I was going for a. Never mind. We'll leave oh, it at that. Oh, we're talking yeah. about one of those. Uh, one of, you know, one of them. Do, yeah, fitness. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I've eaten. Yeah, fitness. Yeah. You ever heard? Anyways, of it? continue. Yeah. So yeah, so it was, it was, it was just a, a really weird thing, and we experienced some power outages, which was actually in, in Preston's or sorry, in Nate's room that was out, and we were scrounging to find the the port or the the box, you know, the electrical box, and it was actually in Tyler's room. Then we turned it back on. It must have been a little power surge. But they are in two different circuits, which which make it well, doesn't make sense because it's just poorly done then. Was it just his room? Yes. It yes. It was but, so his room is separate from the rest of the house then? It's not just one yeah, there may be one switch from everything, but it just flipped that breaker, which means that the incoming line maybe it was due to whatever is going on there. Maybe it wasn't. But really, it should be just downstairs. Or, if you're really smart, you can label each bedroom. Which I'm not sure. I don't think they even did. And so you have different, you have separate breakers for each bedroom, each area of the house, right? Normally you do. Sometimes if in a breaker you go, oh, microwave outlet. Because, you know, the microwave is just going to surge a lot. It's yeah. a lot of power. But, side note of all this that is happening... There is guys out there that go nuts with implementing or, or you know, uh, what's the right word? Um, constructing, no. Implementing, ra rather, electrical box. So you have electrical box in and you have all the lines, right? You have these, you have a, code, a plastic coating around these wires that you have, you know, a live and a dead wire practically. A ground and a live wire. Yep. Red and black. Yep. So they all come into the electrical box, and you hook them all up to the, the breaker, which, you know, turns it on, turns it off. Yeah. We can get a deeper explanation, but we don't need to. I should turn all your rooms off at some point. <laughs> so anyways, so all these, like, there's guys that will do a, like, this motion to all the going in the electrical box. So it's super neat and clean. Yeah. It's crazy. And so I learned the redneck way how to do it. Please explain. No, What's it's the redneck way. The redneck way is just is, is just throw them around, just fucking whatever. You works. just do it. You don't know if one's live or not. You just go in and you just kind of. You just grab the end of it, hope that it's dead. Well, well, no, around. I mean electric, like, like electricians. Take the wire, attach it to your heart, hope right. it starts sparking. Right, maybe it'll find help me find love, right? Um, but are you just talking about your girlfriend, buddy? God, we're not in that. You're in the doghouse. You're in the doghouse. Yeah. I'll join you in the doghouse, though. Don't worry about that. Oh, rip. Oh, no. Rip. Rip. Why is uh, you good with me still? And, no, that's all right. Hoy and I have been needing to have a conversation oh, for the I last eight months. Money. Yeah. Oh. oh, shit. Um, But they just they just fancy out these, uh, these electrical boxes, and it's really satisfying to watch. Just everything is looking hot and nice. Just um, Kind of like you. <sighs> Thank you. Hon. Hey, God. Looney fan starts next week. Yeah, Looney fan starts next week. Um, what a hell of a conversation though, when you really think about it. Me talking about uh, you know, electrician's job and only fans and something like that. Maybe maybe we get Tyler in a little bomb builder. Ooh. Bob little builder. little That's casting what I had couch. As my like first birthday. That was my cake. That was, was also Bob mine. Bob the builder. 
I feel like Bob the Builder has to have just the tiniest, most pink nipples you've ever seen. (laughs) (laughs) They just have to be. Like, I can see it right now. I also, I can't tell you that I actually... Was he shirtless in the show? I never remember the show, to be honest with you. I remember the shit that I got from Bob the Builder. You know, like all the fun stuff. Can you find some shirtless Bob the Builder? Is that a thing? Is that canon? I think yeah. Rule 34. Do we know what he looks like? No, 34. stay away from that. Yeah. I just figured I out I just want to know if there's any was. canon, like, weird outfits. I just figured out what Rule 34 moments, was, Bob like, two the Builder. Days ago. Really? So, yeah. honestly, I remember it's nothing about the show. sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I remember nothing about the show Bob the Builder. Nor do I, but it's so prominent in the our lives. Shit. I think. It's like, I remember exactly what he looks like. Yeah. I remember the song, you know, can we fix it? You know, that yes, whole little bit. Yes, we can. Then his Perfect. tools like talk to him too. Yeah, I, I think, think so. I, I, Wasn't there like a cat? Oh. I thought there was like some little animal in it too. It was just like there's so many things about this show, and I just don't remember it. But I remember him, and I remember the little theme song. But I haven't watched that since I was two years old. Did he have a brother? I feel like he had a brother. Yeah, the like brother Robert, was unemployed, Robert though, I Builder. think. I think so, like a Mario Luigi type, yeah, yeah. type thing, you know? He was unemployed, and he just stayed at home playing games all day. I'm pretty yeah. sure that was it was. Or maybe that was me. This feels like some sort of capitalist <laughs> propaganda. I turned 20 <laughs> too. <laughs> this is some sort of capitalist propaganda right there. It's Bob the Builder's brother's unemployed, you know. You don't even know his name. You don't know what he looks like. You just know he stays at home, plays games. I think that, uh, I don't know if this mic is working. But oh well, we, we don't can, need. We mic. can relay the information. Um, there should be a spinoff TV show of the brother who's a white collar worker. Oh. Oh, so so you're saying like so Bob the Builder with depression. Right. Okay. No, no, no. I was say, then you, like then you see Bob the Builder like uh, like are you are you thinking like um Bob the Builder which yeah, Bob is a. Advisor. Oh, yeah, you know, like he's Bob the financial advisor. Like, you know, he, he has some similar qualities to Bob, right? He might try to build the porch on the weekend, you know, but he's yeah. he's also doing... He knows the tools. Yeah. But he uses his brain more than ever. Yeah, but he also uh is doing coke on the weekdays. Right. So. They they both grew up in the same town. Yeah. Obviously same parents. I would um, hope. This might be work. Um you know, same upbringing, so same values. Mm-hmm. But just different lifestyle, you know, and seeing what corporate America does to a human being. So, you know, I really like that idea because it'd be good for kids to learn about money. You know, you could have his brother being like, Bob, you really got to put more into your 401k, man. Oh, my God. You really got to do it. Your Roth IRA. That, yeah. yeah we're, we're, Bob, <laughs> have you ever heard of uh, Robin Hood? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let me yeah. tell you a little bit about the Vanguard index funds. All right, Bob. <laughs> Kids would love it. What kid wouldn't love no, that? Literally. Bob, let me tell you, your savings account money just sits there and it never does anything. Exactly. You know, just, just all of it is just like, In invest, economy, invest, invest. Yeah, yeah. Just wrap the lines. And then it cuts scenes of Friday night. He's exiting work. It's 9 to 5. He's just leaving. He's like, what a great week. I made people money. I'm making money. He goes home. Cut scene. Parties line of coke wolf on wall street yeah he's perfect all for a kid's show yep. and he just says hey this this could be your life too if you were me and it, this is i i feel like that could be what's his name maybe his name is anthony i feel like that's a great name for yeah. bob the builder's uh brother well, and then, and then halfway aunt. through the show then you get to the point where that stock that he invested in just completely crashed you know he put he thought dogecoin's going to the moon and all of a sudden i did that <laughs> how's it going I made money off of it. I was gonna say, yeah, I feel like I feel like yeah. Dogecoin is actually one of those safer ones. Sorry, Bitcoin for the first bubble. I was in on that. Then you made money. Did you make it out? Yes, he did. Uh, I don't know. It was messy. That's it, it was all messy. It was pretty messy. I had some friends in on it with me. We all just kind of. Goff was on it, wasn't he? The fan. I oh, think yeah, Goff, Goff, Goff was on it pretty pretty hard. The lineman, the lineman guy. Uh, got a stash that could kill, you know, whole country, and uh, a stash that could eat a country, kill a country. We're no. talking kill like Andy? money stash or mustache stash. Money and or stash both. stash. It's all yeah. both. It's just a loose translation. Stashes. And he, uh, Multiple. I remember him talking about that too because he also, if you ever look at his skins in CS:GO, Jesus, 
He, Does he, he have, like, the dragon lord, the he's about, skin? I know, he Might probably is, well. yeah, he probably is about, like, skin yeah, he anything? probably is about three, thirty-five hundred k in skins. No, he probably has around two grand. Yeah, one day he was playing, he's like, guys, you know what's kind of funny? <laughs> My skins are worth more than some people's car. <laughs> and I'm like, that is so nuts. Gaff, I, I don't know that. if that's I'd say good. that's funny, but that is something. <laughs> yeah. Well, in the that game is value. You, that yeah. is wild. Not in-game like, value, sorry. But. There, was a, there was a video that I saw once of somebody trying to control the market of, like, a cabbage sticker on Steam or something like that. Really? I could see it. A little arbitrage. So they tried to buy... <laughs> You know, they they bought out, like, the whole market so they could set the price on this random little thing. 4chan non-fungible token. Okay. They were uh, started by these four guys that, you know, grew up kind of on that 4chan Reddit spectrum. So they're, they're trolls. Almost everything about the Bored Ape Yacht Club NFTs have super racist undertones. Like oh, a lot of imagine. Nazism, like almost... Everything that the apes wear is in reference to just really racist stuff. It's pretty crazy. And people just fell for it. You know, you got Steph Curry out here. He's his profile picture on Twitter. You got Jimmy Fallon talking about him. Yeah. And it's just, yeah, they're just hyping up the big, like the most racist thing ever. And they, no one knew it. Even in Logan oh, Paul, you, the Logan Paul's NFTs, like where they had the, what was the NFT that was in a chain? Nate's literally laughing right now. I don't know why he's smiling. Uh, he's clipping. I'm doing my fucking job. He's, he's doing clippy. his job, everyone. Sorry. He's the Microsoft Assistant Clippy right now. You you get a 5% <laughs> raise this week. That was my favorite friend in high school. <laughs> oh, wait. Not high school. Middle school. Middle school? Not yeah. high school. Who's high school? Lenars? The old right hand. No. Oh, I'm oh kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> kidding. There it is. Kidding. Sorry, Claire. Uh, if you're watching. Oh, fuck. <laughs> the thing? Okay. Whoa. Now, next segment. Yeah, yeah, next segment. Anyway, Time. back to NFTs. Yeah, back. What, what's wild to me about NFTs is that <laughs> somebody, and it actually made me think about physical art a little bit, you know, at the same time. You know, if somebody, you know, Leonardo da Vinci created the Mona Lisa. He did. And, you know, that holds value. And it's like, kind of makes you think, why does this hold value versus, you know, a recreation of it? Like somebody makes the same exact painting with oil paint. I mean, at this point, somebody, there's probably somebody talented enough that could recreate a lot of, you know, very famous oil paintings Mm -hmm. that will look almost the exact same. And if you're not an expert, you won't know. It's not an original, though. Right. But it's the thing be an is, original. why does the original hold that much value? And that's that's kind of what I thought about with NFTs. And I mean, I like that made me kind of think that it's an interesting, cool idea for NFTs. But at the same time, the creation of NFTs made me question the importance of like the original art. Yeah, because you're saying, oh, well, I have the original of this. This little digital art that somebody created, which it, it ultimately got to, for me, you know, with the the Yacht Club Board Abe thing. It's like, I just couldn't understand with those mm-hmm. because they're just some ugly little photos. Yeah, it's just all hype. It's all clout. It's like, what? it's it's the same as, and you know, I mean, I'm, I'm sure there's lots, lots of people like Supreme and stuff like that and... It's like, yeah, Very you similar. got the original, and it's like, I get that. But it's it's like that same idea. Like, why are we getting so excited over something that's just simple? It's like you're not... It didn't take, like, some big brain, or it didn't take some sort of extreme skill to create. Like, these, right. these little eight profile pictures or, you know, other people's NFTs. You know, somebody just said, actually, I'm going to sell my digital art. Yeah in a separate way and all of a sudden it has this enormous amount of value because i'm saying that it's an nft and yeah the stars kind of aligned for them yeah and i and i think we we actually did talk uh, and i think we actually previously talked about that not previously but we have talked about this on the podcast for a while now is that 
the career, the the choice that we're doing right now, doing this podcast and everything else, and, and YouTube is can even consider an art to some extent, you know, a channel or to um, different types of mediums of art. It's all based on the uniqueness of it, the simplicity of that something is now rare, right? So, uh, for example, there's kind of put, you know, image to what I'm thinking is that so Devin Booker's house as I, I was watching a video on Devin Booker the, the Phoenix Suns point guard or he's, he's probably a shooting guard I don't even remember but he's a he's a famous basketball player his house has a 1950 style desk in the living room it's 1950 style and everyone loves it right it's simple it's a different type of architecture inside the room right but people love that now because it's so abstract in their mind to what is normal. So that something simple of like looking up, putting a banana and being like, this is this is going to be worth something. This is art right here because I say it's art. Nailing the banana to the wall. Yeah, nailing the banana to the wall. It's something that we talked about. It, it It's not the fact that this object or the, the medium or whatever we're working with is up there. It's based on what the artist's intent is. And the artist's intent is that it's just as like, this is simple. This is my view. This is my point, right? This is whatever. But it's so abstract from what is happening to everyone else going around them. Mm -hmm. And that's the only reason why we keep cycling through everything. We cycle through different colors within, like we when we talked about the color palette. We cycle back to, you know, the 1960s or even early 90s. We cycle clothing now a lot more. You know, not tight-fitted jeans anymore. It's going to be loose, pleated jeans and, and light denim or, like, thrifting stuff. It, it, it's very intriguing, and I would love to learn a lot more about it, right? Everyone wants to go back to the retro, the old classic. Mm -hmm. Most people now, when they're walking around with an NBA jersey... Are they walking around with a retro jersey or are they walking around with a brand new jersey? It's retro. Because why not wear retro? You know, oh, this was a cool jersey, right? Yeah. When that was the most, you know, relevant jersey at the time when that was. Yeah, I think part of that trend stems from, like, sustainability as well. And, like, yeah. saying fuck you to fast fashion. I think that's part yeah. of the inspiration for, like, everybody going vintage and, like, uh, thrift stores and whatnot. It's, it's, it's like but the same reason. It's usually a many different reasons. Yeah, come together and then something just blows it back <laughs> yeah. up. Yeah, like you're saying. It's kind of like the and same. It might be a cool story about the artist or right. just something very or unique about it. Or my parents wore it or, you know, yeah. whatnot. It's kind of like us going back to it. what I was trying to say there. Is like, it's kind of going us back to Black Ops 1 what? or Halo. Halo Wars. Oh, yeah. Get, well, get, Black Ops 1. On Love that. Great, great video game at the time. And we want to go to it because it was an important time, whatever, to someone or whatever. It was like a beginning game you want to play, right? Or MW3 or MW2 or not even Call of Duty, but some other game, right? That was to that extent. I think it relates all in the same category. This is like, that's a retro game now. That's decade, maybe older game. I feel old now. Yeah, no, well, I, right? You're someone else that, you know. I actually with the with the recent release of Overwatch 2 and you know the the idea behind the whole game right now is it's the same game there's almost no changes made to it but it's so huge right now because they market it as something new even though it's still that same old thing so you still get that like kind of idea of nostalgia of like Oh, I, I, I remember really grinding love this playing game, this, yeah. and I remember, yeah, I, I remember the rank grind, and I remember playing these characters, and this is, and I mean, uh, that's something that I found. It's like, oh, this was so much fun. Why did I ever stop? And you know the reason I stopped? Because the the <laughs> other piece of nostalgia came out. Yeah. Or, you know, or you know, occasionally it's something new. Something new pops out, but it's it's that nostalgia factor, something that we always come back to. Yeah, and and I even think with that, like going into media and and certain things like that, I think even the film grade goes back to different, right? I mean, Nate could even talk about it too. Like film grade goes back to you know vintage, or some shots are just shot on vintage film now because they like the quality of it. There's more of an appreciation of that quality, 
the grain yeah the grain mm-hmm. or or going to your old olympus you know um can't think of the the name but it's a it's a camera that you put film in olympia olympia something olympus. Yeah, Olympus, you know, Olympus camera that, you know, people get now where it's just like, okay, I'm going to shoot it, I'm going to develop it, you know. Yeah, I'm more <laughs> of a vintage Fuji guy, but... You know, yeah, yeah, Fuji you know, too, Fuji like, own. like all that stuff is like, it's coming back in because, and like Polaroids and stuff like that, I can't explain why, it should be a, a whole big project or a whole big analysis, you know, of understanding why we revert back it just it seems like a revolving thing so i guarantee that we have to wrap up this podcast here soon but i bet that something else soon something random is going to revert back to whatever all right let's predict it right now women's rights <laughs> oh Lord. No, well, that's not... fitting for the election right just now. kidding yeah guys go out and vote yeah go ahead and vote make your voice heard um but I, I, my, what's your actual guess? What? What's your actual guess? My actual guess to what's gonna come back? Yeah. Dude, I wish it was fucking pocket watches, dude. Those <laughs> pocket are watches sick. are sick. Yeah. Dude, I've been looking at them online yeah. recently. You know, you just got a little chain hanging out the pocket. Yeah. Thomas Shelley vibe. I'm trying to just Ooh. check a pocket yeah. watch. Yeah. That'd be kind of a flex. I mean, I got my vintage on right now. This one. Just, that's why I bought it. Just yeah. I like the old style. Yeah, this is the only thing I wear that's really vintage is this. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah, that's there we go. yeah I'll take a bite of that later. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, my prediction here, I think I'm going to take a little bit more of a musical approach. I feel like we're coming up, we're in that era where it's been 100 years since jazz. And you, I'm, you kind of hear it in music by, you know, different more r&b and bluesy kind of artists like you know i mean lizzo's got kind of aspects of r&b in her music and you got bruno mars and i feel like and uh silk sonic i feel like you could get a little bit more of that jazz live instrument feel coming back in music oh, i agree actually a great example of that is like black country new road i guess they're not super jazzy but have you have you heard of them i've heard of them you should check them out their new album, not really new, but it came out in 2022. Very good. We are in 2022 right now. We are. So it's like, John's it came out videos. early 2022. All right, John, what's your prediction? My prediction that brick phones are coming back. People are going to get try to get it. There's going to be a movement and getting away from the screens of the smartphones and that it's going to be back to the, you know, flip up call or it's just gonna be the solid oh, brick the bricks yeah it's like a of... nokia god damn that yeah. would be crazy yeah but with that let us know in the chat like what your predictions may be but for right now we gotta head into the after hours so this is the end of the original podcast so i'm john i'm, I'm eric i'm nope. eric yeah. i'm tyler again he's tyler yeah hey, tyler follow us on socials we're on youtube or on Instagram, or on Spotify, and you can also find us on Twitch, and sub please on Twitch for Looney Bin Productions. Your sub makes us money, and we appreciate <laughs> it. <laughs> and we're from John's <laughs> brand new PC. Yeah, I bought a brand new PC today, and uh, he sold and we his, need it, and we he, need it because it's all a tax write off for us, and that's what we're gonna try to. He keep sold the trumpet for this. So join this us is back business. in five minutes for after hours, which you can only exclusively see on Twitch after this. So please stay tuned.